Hello, welcome to the numerology and the astrology for December 15th, 2020. If you add all those numbers together, you get the number 13, and if you have the 1 and the 3 together, you get the number 4. Now, within this balance, which is the number 4, within this desire for harmony, which is the number 4, which within this seeking neutrality, which is the number 4, um, there is a new pattern that is unfolding. And I want you to kind of sense the musical rhythm and pattern that begins to beat your heart to a new drum and bring hope alive from the safe corners that we placed it in to protect it from the horror of the past few years. So while the songs playing now in our life have hints of familiar tones and rhythms that have helped us feel proud, there is quite a bit that we need to do to restore the name and value that used to be American. Right now, that familiar drum beat is slowly awakening and getting louder. The balance of power is shifting and it's going to be interesting to watch as we move beyond the dysfunction back into a very new functionality. It is easy to destroy balance, which is the number four, but to create a new system that allows for a more honest balance will take a lot of energy, time, and effort. And it is a work that must be done because without the inner and outer stability stabilizing the global events, it will continue to wreak havoc on our beautiful world. The astrology today. Venus is going into Sagittarius this evening until January 8th and it makes a sexual spunk come back into the picture. Something that might be fun over the holiday season, but this morning it will sextile to Saturn as it is at 29 degrees and preparing to leave Capricorn for the progressive sign of Aquarius, something all of us are looking forward to. Venus and Saturn helps you ground and brings what is really important to the forefront. It makes you realize that what matters is having safety, security, and loyalty. Some things that you can count on seem even more important. What has been revealed in this COVID pandemic were the things that really matter. For each person, that may be different, but it boils down to family and spiritual family. We see things, we will, we see things will clear eyes in the harsh light of this game of truth and consequences and what goes around will always come around. Karma is more consistent than any living human being. Trust me. We are beginning to realize that all our actions make us responsible. We are beginning to see that whether or not we want to be responsible for our choices does not matter to the forces and laws that rule this earth. And I'm not talking about human laws, but the spiritual laws. Operate for the next few weeks from the place of financial responsibility with the moon in Capricorn. It is better to be safe than sorry. We are moving towards a more direct approach in all things. Truth cuts like a knife. Higher purpose is calling to each of us. Chiron is still in the sky and will turn direct today. And it makes you feel vulnerable because the emotional truth is coming into the light of clarity and it can make those that believed in distortion and illusion confused and angry. Don't expect to be comfortable today because now you need to make some appropriate actions regardless of how you feel. Mercury and Uranus add to the stress and challenges. Don't get bad. Just do what's right in front of you and expect to feel a bit scattered. My quote for today. What if this world we exist in is not what it seems? What if this world is about acquiring all the means? Acquiring the skills that can take us up and beyond. Acquiring the will to not stop and keep going on. Perhaps this world is a testing ground of sorts one that intends to challenge, not a vacation resort. The way to transcend this world and time is not by causing suffering or manifesting crime. It is by lovingly, by loving totally without fear or withdrawal. The way out is found by embracing all. Okay, my blog for today. 
I believe this world is a type of blank canvas for each of us to paint upon. We see what we have yet to embrace and understand. We confront those things within us that were hidden until the moment our psychological development was ready for us to embrace something new. Some see this world as a hell or as a prison for wayward souls. Some of us see this world as a heaven in the making. And each action we make and unmake, the goodness or the darkness, as the war within our souls acts itself out in the external world as a dramatic dance of life and death. Death is not a failure, nor is it something to fear. Death is a doorway which is always near. Deaths can be harsh, but deaths can be soft. Deaths can be a relief for those that get lost. Life is a dream that travels through time. Life is a doorway to reality from the sublime. Life takes a toll and offers great rewards. Life is the lure that each soul heads towards. And today I have like a personal side note. So I have this weird phenomena that happens when big solar eclipses are going on and probably because I have five planets in Leo, which is the sun, and um, I have uh, pla a whole bunch of planets in Cancer and a Cancer ascendant, which is ruled by the moon. So eclipses always include both of those all the time, and some smack me harder than others. Well, when they hit, they hit either before the eclipse, as within 24 hours, or at the eclipse exactly, like the one that crossed over Utah and the U.S. a few years ago, or slightly afterwards, as in the following day. Um, the eclipse that went over the U.S. a few years ago literally put me almost into a coma. <laughs> I, I got such a raging migraine headache that I had to lay down, and the moment I did, I was unconscious for about four hours. When people say to me, wow, did you see the eclipse? I had to say no, because literally I could not even stand up or even open my eyes. Yesterday, before this eclipse, the same thing happened. I was working in my upper building and I got this terrible headache. And I don't get migraines anymore, but I, I can still get these headaches and I get all the symptoms without exactly the pain, but I still have all the symptoms. It's really weird. And um, so the same thing happened. And I was working in the upper building and I told my husband that I had this terrible headache and I was going down to the house to get an Advil. And I got down to the house in a daze, and um, just so you know, I don't even remember walking down the hill to the house, and so I took the pill, I laid down on the bed, and I literally passed out again, and I came to hours later, and I felt like the world was sort of spinning around me still, and it affects my eyes, and it affects my ability to um, read. And it makes it difficult to read. And so when I was doing the video for yesterday, it took more concentration than normal for me to see the words on my computer during the video. And my husband came down. He was so concerned. And I had to explain my weirdness to him because he had never seen it happen before because he's been working in India and Bangladesh for the last eight, nine years, ten years. And last night, I had just bucket loads of weird dreams, which is typical when one of these eclipses impacts me. And today, while better, I still feel a bit ungrounded, and I know that it will dissipate over the rest of the day. I just thought I would share, because I'm sure others out there have certain astrological patterns that impact them greatly also. So I just wanted to say, well, you're not alone. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. Bye.